hallelujah, we are in, you know, this time of worship. And it's not our regular Sunday as how we would worship. We are very condensed today. But one thing I'm sure, that the word of God is coming in its full measure today. Amen? So we want to prepare our hearts to receive of the Lord today. Because indeed he's here to bless and he's here to do us good. Can somebody give him praise today? Somebody give him praise. Let us pray. Father, we lift you in the sanctuary. We declare that you are Lord. We declare that there is no God like Jehovah. We declare that you are worthy of all praise. And so, God, as we come today, we come as nothing before you. Lord, as we stand before you, our righteousness are as filter rags. But I'm glad that you are the cleansing stream. Oh, God, and we see you today because you are able to wash. You are able to deliver. You are able to set life free. And so, as we come today, we pray that you will do a work in our hearts. We pray that you'll set us on one accord. We pray, Lord, that as we lift you up, our praises will be acceptable unto you. I pray that you unite us today, oh God, and cause us to fear you and to give you all that is due to your matchless name. Thank you for the gathering this morning. Thank you for those who join us through social media. And I pray, mighty God, that together we will lift your name high. Oh God, we will praise you. Oh, and we will give you all that is due to your name today. I pray you touch the hearts of your people today. As we come before you, we come with our needs. We come with our, our concerns. We come with our trials. But we're glad that you are our source today. We're glad that you are our hope. You are our peace. Oh, and your love towards us is unfailing. And so we you up this morning and we pray that you will go and lead by your anointing and your power. Let the yokes be broken today. Let lives be set free. Oh God, let your power fall in this very sanctuary. Even now I pray for a touch upon your servant and she will declare your word that God you will lift her up. Yes God, you are her strength today. You are her hope. Your word will go forth with power and lives will be changed. Lives will be challenged. Lives will be healed today through the blood of Jesus Christ and through the spoken word. I pray you enter in even now. I pray for clarity in your mind. Oh God, let preaching be easy and let your word fall afresh on us today. Yes, God, touch everyone as we come today. And let your spirit move in us. I pray, God, that every distraction will be put under subjection in the now. Every subjection. Yes, we put them under subjection today. And we declare that the Lord of hosts is with us. And the God of Jacob is our refuge. I pray that we will not focus on ourselves today, Lord. But we will see you in all your glory. Yes, help will be slain in this house today. And the Lord will be glorified. I pray that people will give you worship. We won't just come and look and wonder what is going to happen today. Some people are concerned because they don't even know what is planned for today. But I want to declare that your power is here, mighty God. So let your power fall. Let your power break forth in this place. Let our souls be refreshed. Let us leave here better than we came. Be ready to go forward and conquer because greater is he that is within us today than he that is within the world. Bless us, we pray, mighty God. Move in every area of the service. And to you we give glory and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. For our devotional part of the service this morning, I want us all to turn to Psalm 1 and we will do it together. Bless the Lord. We have not done that scripture in a very long time. And it's such a simple scripture, but it's one that is very profound. And if we follow it carefully, we will not find ourselves in trouble. We will stay at the feet of Jesus, and he will bless and do great things in our lives. Psalm 1. Bless the Lord. Most of us know it by heart. But even when I know it, brothers and sisters, when I focus on the reading from the Bible, 
It gives me a fresh, fresh anointing and a fresh touch. Rather than when I'm reciting from memory. Amen? So I have to look for the scripture. Together we read. Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Shall we bless the Lord? Let us honor God's word by saying, Glory be to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall it be, word without end. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, brothers and sisters, and friends, everyone who are here this morning. I just want to greet you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Indeed, God is here to bless and He's here to do us good. Already I announced that our Reverend French will be giving the word, and that will be momentary. Amen. In another few minutes, you will be delivering the word, and for that, we are grateful. Can you give a big round of applause? Bless the Lord. And I also want to acknowledge Elder Stewart, who brought the word last week, and all of the lay ministers who are here, Minister Young, Yes, Minister Monroe. I especially glad to see Minister Monroe. Yeah. Bless the Lord. And she's worshiping through her pain. Yeah. She's worshiping through her trials. And that's how we have to do it in our brothers and sisters. Yeah. Yes, praise our way through. Because the pain not going to go away instantly. But we can praise our, you know, praise yeah. through our pain. And the Lord will give us strength and help us to endure. Bless the Lord. I want to greet all our brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to greet our musicians, our friends from the community, and those who continue to come from time to time. We are so glad to have you. And we are having a shorter morning service, and then we are going to go into a family time. And so we will dismiss, and only our members will remain for the second half of today's proceeding. But we are so glad to have you all today. And I trust that you will not withhold your praise. Give God your best praise today because this is what He desires. Praise God. Already some members have extended you know, their apologies for not being here. And uh, we want to continue to pray their strength and just ask God to be their portion as they go through today and beyond. Sister Powell is asking for prayer for herself and her family. And so we want to remember her today. She indicated last week that she would not be here. And so we are aware of her circumstance. But in terms of the prayer request, that much I don't know. But I know we have a God who is concerned about us. And a God who is able to help us. And a God who can respond every time that we call upon him. So we want to remember Sister Powell today. Praise God. We want to greet all our friends who are joining us on Facebook. And later on, we'll upload on YouTube. And so, we greet everyone who will participate in our service today and just lift up the name of Jesus with us today. Praise God. I have a birthday coming up on the 24th, that's Sister Isaac. Yes, I'm going to ask you to stand as you'll be celebrating on Saturday. Church, let us sing for Sister Isaac. Amen. And following that, I'm going to ask Minister um, Adams, Never greet you, Minister. Yes, you never look like, never see you initially. But I'm glad that I see you now. So, welcome, and I'm going to ask you to greet her at the end of the singing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you.
bless the Lord, bless the Lord. And just before we do the offering at this time, I just want to, I'm going to be praying for the offering. I'm going to be praying for Sister Powell and all of us with this bottle of, of, of olive oil that is with us. So I'm going to invite us all to stand. I'm going to ask the ushers to come forward as we do the prayer. Praise God. And we just manage our time well as we move into the next half of our service shortly. Praise God. Father, we lift you up in this place. We declare that you are Lord. We declare that there's none like you. And Lord, we come to you because you're never tired of hearing us. And God, you call us that we will cast all our cares upon you because you care for us. And so even now, mighty God, we place this power and your family in your hands. Lord, we don't know what the circumstances are. Lord, she has indicated that she had an appointment today. I pray, God, that all will go well and that, God, there will be no disturbance in your plans. I pray, mighty God, that your will will be fulfilled in this day in their lives. And I pray, Lord, that whatever their needs and desires are, that, God, you will meet them at the point of their need. I pray for your blessing upon this family. I pray for them for your help in their troubles and in their distress. I pray that you will favor them and you will prosper their lives. And I pray, God, that they will continue to trust in you and to hope in you, dear God. I pray now that you will work out every situation and you prove yourself to Sister Paul and her family even now. I declare them blessed and delivered, healed and set free today through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Father, we lift up this olive oil to you. We pray even now that you will consecrate it and you will sanctify it. I pray, God, that every impurity will be removed. Moved. I pray, mighty God, that your anointing will touch this oil. And every time that it is used, oh God, there will be great results. And to you will all glory and praise be given. I pray, mighty God, that you will bring forth healing and deliverance every time it is used. And may your people recognize that it's all about you. So, Father, we consecrate this oil to you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Blessed Holy Ghost. Amen to your will, mighty God. And Father, we lift up the offering before you today. As your people stretch forth their hands, we declare, mighty God, that it will never be an ordinary stretch. Oh God, as we stretch forth our hands to give, I pray that the power of the living God will touch our hands and will make us whole today. I pray that God, we will be lifted up, we will be empowered, we will be blessed beyond measure. Oh God, we will be blessed, pressed down, shaken together and running over. We declare your favor upon your people today. I pray that every lack in our lives will be dispelled even now and that God we will be blessed in our going out in our coming in from this and forth and forevermore. Oh God, some people are giving out of their last but I pray mighty God that their cupboards will never be empty. Oh, their will be supplied from day to day and that they will prove you in the season. I pray for those that are jobless and not able to stretch for their hands today. That mighty God your power will touch them and God you will sustain them and you will make a way and you will provide for them that in the time, oh God in the season of giving, the next season of giving, they will be able to stretch forth and every time they stretch forth we declare that the favor of God will continue to be multiplied upon your people. We are declaring blessing in this house. We are declaring blessing in this season. Some people are in distress for too long. Some people are concerned, mighty God. Some people feel hopeless. Spirit of the living God, fall upon us today. Break forth in abundance. Let us live in this land and enjoy we declare it done in the strong name of Jesus. Bless the offering we pray. Oh God, cause that it will grow and multiply and you skillfully to proclaim your name in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Even now, mighty God, bless those that lift the offering today. So many times we take them for granted. 
and we don't even recognize them. I say, stand at the door. I say, usher people into your presence. Mighty God, we declare a special anointing upon all the ushers today, and especially those who will lift this offering under this anointing today. Lord, we declare that you bless them, prosper them, and lift them unto victory in Jesus' name. And everyone who souls today, mighty God, Lord, and them not to sow spiritually, sow in abundance, and cause the people to be replenished and blessed. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Singers, I need your help. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the Lord. Every time I turn around, God is blessing me. Every time I turn around,
Thank you, Jesus.
Praise the name of Jesus. And you know, in Jeremiah 31, 31, God has already said that he was going to make a new commandment. You know, the Old Testament is our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. In Jeremiah, God was looking forward to the time when he would come himself. And he said that he was going to make a new covenant, a new command, a new, giving new instructions and the way church this morning. So the first um, part of the one another commands or instructions that I'm going to focus on is the one that speaks the law. And I have about two or so, three scriptures to share from that category. And St. John 15 from 12, St. John 30 from 30 to 35. I want us to go there for a while. St. John Jesus was getting ready to leave his disciples. It will, he had just had his last supper. And he had just said to Judas that whatever he is, and he, he had declared before that one of you shall betray me. And he had said to Judas, whatever you do, do it quickly. And Jesus and Judas alone understood what was meant by that statement. And so Jesus, in that moment when he was thinking about his own demise, thinking about his purpose for coming to earth, he, in his last words, and last words are very important, in his last instructions, the last set of commands that he would give us, we read from verse 31 where Jesus took the time to speak to his disciples about something that was very important. And verse 31 of chapter 13 of John says, Therefore, when he was gone out, when Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself and shall straightway glorify him. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, whither I go, you cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give to you. And this is it, church. This is the new commandment that you love one another. As I have loved you, that you also love one another. And Jesus went further to say, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. Can the church praise God? Praise God. A new commandment. Was Jesus trying at this point to change the Mosaic law? Jesus trying to contradict himself or to change what he has already said because God is not a man that he should change his thoughts because God knows the end from the beginning. But what we see right here is that Jesus was saying that there is a new standard of loving. It's not, um, I'm not talking about the love that you would have shown based on what is written in Leviticus. I'm talking about a standard, the new command, this depth of love takes Christians to a new way of expressing love to others. It was the standard by which others would know that we are the believers of Jesus Christ, that we are the church, that we are members of his body. 
Jesus said, you are to love one another as I have loved you. You know, within all of us, we are flesh. And therefore, we can to love in the way, the depth of love that God would have commanded us to love. But we can only love, truly love others the way Jesus Christ has said it in his words. We can only love to the extent that we know God who is love. And so Jesus was saying that as I go from you, you are to love one another as I loved you. As I loved you. You know, there are so many different forms of love. Types of love. We have the Eros love, which is the erratic romantic love. That is the love you feel for your husband or wife. That passionate love. And then we have filial. And this love is the love for friends and those who are our equal. Just brotherly love. We have stargate love. And this love is love of parents for children. This is the love, the familial love, the bond that parents and children share. And then we have the agape love. Agape. This love that is unconditional. And this is the love that Jesus is calling the church towards. Uh, the love that concerns and we are concerned with others and we are concerned about people and their welfare. With the love that calls God to step out of eternity and step into time. And while we were still in our sins, died in our place. While they were boxing him and you know beating him and crowing him, mocking him, insulting him, spitting on him, he went to the cross anyway. And Jesus felt that dream when he was in the garden. He felt that kind of humiliation. He felt the cruelty and the passion of the cross. But he said, Father, if it is your will, I will go. Since it is your will, Father, I will go and die. That's the love that God is calling the church towards today. And you know what? You don't have, you, 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 know, you don't have to like people, right? Because we have the star love and we have the filial love. Yes, and when God, Jesus was not telling his disciples to like people. Yes, to be, you know, all chummy and huggy and, you know, the beer bug. But he was calling us to a higher standard of um, relationships, a higher standard of dealing with our one another. How do we treat those who are not at the maturity, the level of maturity that we are at? Jesus was calling his disciples. And I can understand, here was Judas, he shared his meal and he washed his feet. Yes, he knew in his heart what he was going to do. And church, I'm saying to us today that God knows our heart. He knows that sometimes we just can't stand some people. God knows our hearts. Jeremiah 17 says that the heart is deceitful above everything else. The heart is desperately wicked and deceitful above everything else. And who can know it? And then God said that he himself search out the heart. He searched the heart and he tried the mind. Yes, he knows your thoughts. Tries your mind. He knows what is in there even before it becomes action. What a God we serve today. And so God is saying to us that we have to move from surface love up to his standard of loving beyond what we can see and feel. And that's hard sometimes. It's hard sometimes. You find yourself in a place where you have to love to the uttermost. You have to love people to bring them up to God's holy standard. It was not easy for the disciples. And today it is not easy. But you know what? We can do it because the power of the living God is within us. And everything we do must be done according to the power that is within us. We have the mind of Christ and we have the purpose and the passion of Jesus Christ in our hearts. And that is why we have to get the spirit. If we don't have the spirit, we are none of his. That's what the scripture says.
We need the Holy Spirit to love like Jesus loved. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the name of God. Yes, God. Yes, some of us are loved by others because they have the love of God in their hearts. Had it not been for the love of God in their hearts, then we would not be helped today. No, we would be left to suffer because our way. Oh, righteousness, the scripture says, are like filthy rats. And not everybody can take the stench that is coming from some of our lives. But it takes Jesus in the heart of the believer to reach beyond what we are smelling, what we are hearing, what we are seeing, and reach into the hearts of those who need the love and the compassion of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. And then Jesus said, All people will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Because they will realize that you've been with me. Because I am God. What did the scribes and the Pharisees and the people in Jesus' day said, Oh, he thought with authority and not like the scribes. We want people to say of us, that there goes a believer who is akin to, the, to Jesus Christ and his plan and purpose. Hallelujah. In 1 John we read, Beloved, let us love one another. And I want you to listen for the one another. Let us love one another. For love is of God and everyone that loveth is born of God. We have God's divine nature in us. It is that which makes us love like God loves. And so it doesn't take an ordinary man to love like God. It takes those who have come into a relationship with Jesus Christ, first of all. And so I want us to check our love, <laughs> the extent of our love, the degree of our love. Are we truly loving? And if we're not loving like Jesus, it means that uh, <laughs> perhaps we're not one with Jesus. Perhaps we don't have the heart of Jesus. Perhaps the Holy Spirit is not resident in our hearts and operating in our lives. If we can't stand one another as believers, as people who have come out of sin, we must be careful that while we are among the twelve, that we are, and none of us are trying to betray the trust of each other and the trust of God or grieving the Holy Spirit. And so John, 1 John, and this is the same John who wrote St. John, he said, let us love one another because love is of God. God is love. He, he epitomizes love. God is love itself and therefore it is difficult for us not to love truly as God loves. In this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only son into the world that we might live through him. That we might live through him. Brethren, let us not, let us take our eyes off the things that we can see and place it upon Jesus. Let us um, like Peter, not be like Peter who looked on and then looked on. But let us look steadfastly into the face of Jesus. Because here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. What does that mean? It means that Jesus is the sacrifice offered upon our behalf. And, and, our, and that sacrifice appeased God. It is that sacrifice that Jesus offered on the cross that caused reconciliation for you and I. And therefore, it is within that same boundary that we are to love one another. Because while we were in the world, Jesus came and he died so that our sins can be remitted. Praise God. So, beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. That's what John was saying. Let us not be like Cain. 1 John 3, 11 and 12. 12 
says no man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us. You know, and um, the word of God says that we must not love like Cain, who was that wicked one who killed his brother. Hatred, jealousy, malice was in the heart of Cain, and he killed his brother. And then he, when God came to him and said, I read the, the thoughts, I know what you did. Even though he killed his brother in the field and went home to Adam and Eve as if nothing happened, God visited with Cain and told him what he did. When he asked him, where is your brother? He said, am I my brother's keeper? Are we asking that question? When we see a need, are we asking, am I my brother's keeper? And Jesus said, and God said to Cain, your brother's blood is crying to me from the earth. Let us, let us, let us, let it not be, brethren, that our brother's blood or our brother's um, situation is crying out to God from heaven when we are right here on earth in touch with the realities and we can reach out and help them. Where there is no love, there is hatred. There is no two way about it. We are either, we are either loving or we are hating. And it's hatred it sounds like a, a strong word, but that's what it is. Because murder that Cain committed starts in the heart. Yes, that's where it started. The thoughts, and we allow it in the mind, it's, it's taking place there in our reasoning and our thinking. And when we think about it some more, every time we see the brother and the sister, we resent them. Or we allow it to fester and it sits down into our heart. And the heart is your character. It is it becomes who you are. When it gets there, it is dangerous. It leads to murder. Help us today, Father. And we will love God like you love. And love is not from the lips. A lot of us say, I love you, but it's surface. And when we take a deeper look, we realize that uh, that's just words only. But we are really not loving one another. Let us love one another. Praise God. Hallelujah. And let us go to another set of the one another commands. This, this ones, about two of them deals with unity. Getting along with. Getting along with. When we look at the life of Jesus, we realize that even Jesus had, pro had a problem getting along with so many in his time. As a man, the scribes and the Pharisees, they lied on him. They lied about him. They say cruel things. They say that he was uh, um, eating with sinners. Uh, and they accused him of so many things. They tried to trick him. Uh, his disciples, they were, they, they also had problems in their relationship. You know? And today we want to get along with each other. Because in the Bible says, our love is shown in how we get along with each other. And there will be times when there are disagreements in our relationships, in our family. Because we are real people. We will have disagreements. We will have disagreements in our marriage. We will have disagreements at work with our colleagues at work. We will have disagreements in the church because all of us were created differently and we have and God purposed us different and we have different thoughts and ways of doing things based on our background and out of our experience. But that should not stop the flow of love in our relationship. We should get along with each other. It is the love that is going to cause the body of Christ to come into unity. And Jesus said by this, all men will know that we belong to Christ. If we can get along, and the word of God talk, talks to us about the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love. It is one fruit, like an orange. It is one fruit, the love fruit. And what are the pegs of the love fruit? The pegs of the love fruit is gentleness, meekness, Temperance. Yes, we have to 
exercise that patience with one another. That's love. Is that easy to do? Not easy, you know? Because some people set themselves to just do the wrong things. But guess what? Thank God we are not doing it on our own. You know why we don't um, get to obey this command? Because we sometimes want to do it in our own strength and by our own power. And we want it, uh, and we want to change right now. But God is working in the life of that individual as well as in us. God is working out the patience in us to see how well we are cultivating the fruit in our own lives. And God is working on that one as well. And so it takes the love. It takes the love. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Romans 12 verse 4 says that we are members one of another. We are members of one body. We are members of one body. It says for us we have many members in one body. And all members are not the same office. So we mean many are one body in Christ. And everyone we are members one of another. So even Romans 12 tells us that we are different. Even in our offices that we hold in church. We are different in our personalities. We are different in how we look. We are different in how we speak. We are different because God has a purpose for each of our lives. But uh, if the word of God is calling us to be kindly affection one to another. With brotherly love. In honor, we must prefer one another. Not slothful in business. Fervent in spirit, we are serving God. We are to distribute to the necessity of saints. And we must be given to hospitality. We must not wait on others to tell us that they need. But when we have it within us, we must give and distribute. Because that's showing love one for another. And we must be of the same mind. One toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Remember those who are not where you are educationally. Remember those who are not where you are on the social ladder. Remember those who will do things differently from how you do it. Uh, because many of us uh, 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 make decisions based on where we are. Our level of training in different areas and our level of education, our background, and some people are not quite there. But how do we treat those who are not quite there? We're talking about loving relationships today. And Ephesians 4.32 says that we must be kind one toward another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another. And this one is tough. How do we forgive those who lie at us? Deliberately. We know it's a lie. We know some people tell lies for them to look good. Yes, they tell lies to get out of their own little troubles. Yes, and they will lie on you. Because it's when God is not in the heart, that heart is a cold place. And so the fire of the spirit in the, in the victim of the lie is what is going to cause a uh, difference as we relate to one another. So we must be kind one toward another, tender hearted. We must forgive one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven us. And, and Jesus, as he taught his disciples how to pray, he said that we must forgive. Huh? Forgive us our sins as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Sometimes we want to look right. Yes, me too. Well, I want to look right. No, can you do that? Yes, and we come down with a heavy hand. But God is saying it's possible to forgive. And we must do it as we expect him to forgive us. Consider ourselves, lest we also fall into the same situation. And we must bear with one another in their immaturity, their slowness. We must be patient and we must delay punishment. We need to activate tolerance and long suffering. Praise God. So in our relationship, we have to show love, even though it is 
difficult. And some people are very difficult. Some people are unlovable. But still, God is calling us to love them. And it doesn't mean that you have to be in friendship with persons, as I said before, to love them. That's not what Jesus was saying. Jesus was not in friendship with the scribes and the Pharisees. No. But he loved them because he died for them too. And when Homeschooling, 
and share it. Yes, we must bring home fruit. Yes, we must bring fruit home to glory. And the fruit is the souls of those who need to be rescued. We must do discipleship and evangelism even though it is a right time to do evangelism. Christ is everyone you meet. It's about telling them that Jesus Christ, he loves you and you don't have to despair. You don't have to give up hope and lose hope at this time because there's hope in King Jesus. And Galatians 6 2 says, Bury one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. And the law of Christ is to love one another. Let us restore our brother, our sister to the fellowship. Let us look for the backsliders. Let us pray for them. And let us do more than pray for them. Let us seek them out like Jesus would. Let, let us be, be called friends of sinners rather than persons who are not careful and patient and loving those who are in need of our love. Because that's what Jesus did. He went after those who needed him most. You know, when you think of uh, the, the, the man who climbed the sycamore tree, Zacchaeus, you know, he wanted to see Jesus. He wanted to see who he was like, but he was afraid of the people because they, ex they excluded him. He belonged to a different category, public uh, publicans and sinners. And so he was afraid to walk in company with even the disciples, those who said that they were following Jesus. So he climbed a tree so that he could have a look at who Jesus is. Oh, but when Jesus passed that tree, ah, oh, the spirit of love in Jesus reached up to Zacchaeus where he was. And Jesus said, come down, Zacchaeus. Oh, God, Zacchaeus, come down. Confess it. 
Peter. You know, Jesus had to tell Mary and the other friend. I'm telling them seven rays of power for the church. But tell Peter that he too can experience the power of Pentecost. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Peter needs to experience the power of Pentecost. I died for him too. Find your Peter. Service. I 
I know that God wants us, even as we meet afterwards, to consider that we must love one another. You see, when the pure love is in our hearts, oh God, we, 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 we can love one, and we can be humble, and we can be delighted, because we no longer are filled up with our sin. Jesus Christ, know that he's looking in our heart. So my note says, why did Jesus tell the rich young ruler that he could be saved by obeying the commandments? Oh, uh, what does God, what does good really mean? God is good. He called Jesus good, good master. But he was good. You know, today we want to understand that we must love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. The heart, your personality, your character. Love him with your mind, to the thoughts that appear. When you think about your brothers and your sister, are you thinking pure thoughts? We must love God with our thoughts. And we must love our neighbor as we love ourselves. But after that, Jesus said, a new commandment I write to you. You love one another as I love you. God bless you today, brethren. God bless you as you love one another. Do you love me? I love you today. I pray for you. I pray. I call your name. I'm at my bedside. I know that God has called me to intercession to pray for my brothers and sisters. And so we may not have a lot of money. We may not be rich like the rich young ruler. But in our hearts, the love of God is richer. Praise the name of Jesus. That's a gold that we can give in abundance. The love of God, the songwriter says, is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It reaches to the highest star. Yes, we're talking about the love of God today. And as I close today, I'm saying to all of us, let your love fly high from the castle of your heart. That's where it's at. Love in the heart. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. If I could have somebody as I have some love. If I could share somebody with the word or song, if I could show Just no more love. Oh. 
you in this time, Lord God. We know that you are God. And so, Father, we know that all things are possible with you. And so, this morning, we put our people in this morning, Lord God. Lord, we pray, Lord God. Lord, right now, we pray for our healing and the deliverance of our people.